Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial episode for DUD, the Investor's Toolkit. Please have a look at the description below for links to download the app on Google Play and Apple App Store. And while you're there, please have a look at the disclaimer as well. So today, we'll be looking at the Personal Financial Strength Calculator. We'll be asking questions like, are you strong financially right now? We'll be looking at income, earnings, and comparing these to expenses and liquid assets that you might have for investing and also for emergencies on a rainy day. You could consider this a supercharged version of the budgeting that you would do normally on a spreadsheet. And now you can easily see what you're earning and what you're spending on and how much you have left over at the end of each month. Now let's take a look at the concept of a default. What does that mean? That means that if you can't pay your loans for a certain amount of time, let's say for a few months, depending on different banks, you could go into a default where the bank can come in and repossess your car, your house, your property, and possibly put you into bankruptcy proceedings. Now, are you at risk of facing a default during a potential crisis situation, like during an economic downturn, when you lose your job or face a reduction in income, or when you face a medical emergency and your insurance can't cover it? It doesn't matter how high your income is, if most of it is taken up by expenses and loan payments. Now the concept of a runway is also important. It's how long you can cover your expenses and your loan payments based on the cash you have, your savings, and your liquid assets. And the longer a runway you have, the longer you can keep making those payments and covering those expenses without potentially going into default. So let's start by loading up the Duty app then click on Toolkits, and then click on Personal Financial Strength. Now let's look at the inputs. First enter the description for this calculation. For example, you could put in Personal Financial Strength for this year. And then for income, let's put in the monthly income after taxes, followed by the property income from let's say renting out property, any dividends from stocks, and then miscellaneous income from side projects and side hustles. Now for the savings section. Please enter the cash on hand or at the bank, any fixed deposits, the value of unit trust and mutual fund investments, the value of stocks and bonds, if you have any, the value of gold and silver. Now these should be liquid assets, which can be easily liquidated if you need to use them. For monthly loan payments, please enter your mortgage payment or the loan payment for your house and any other properties, your car loans, student loans, and any easy payment schemes if you have them. Now let's take a look at monthly liquid expenses. This section is a long one. The first item is rental, if you're renting a house or a property. For credit card payments, Try to get the average per month, followed by the miscellaneous debt payments, your insurance payments, the amount that you spend on food and household goods, commuting and travel costs, if you're still commuting, utilities like electricity, water or gas, internet and mobile phone fees, entertainment and content subscriptions like Netflix, satellite TV, and other subscription services the amount that you spend on children's studies and activities, which could be extra classes, dance class, piano, taekwondo, all that. And then finally, the amount you set aside every month for property maintenance to do house repairs. Now, I understand that these values might change every month, so try to get the average value. Finally, the confidence level refers to the number of months that you think you can maintain your current income. Please input 1 to 12 months. It's just an estimation of how long you can keep your job or maintain the same level of business income. Once you're done entering all the inputs, click on count to get the result. Now for this example, the total monthly income and the total monthly payments are exactly the same, so there's nothing left over for savings every month. You're effectively spending as much as you're earning. The total liquid assets section refers to savings. 
Total monthly liquid expenses refers to what you're spending on other than loans. And then DSR, or debt service ratio, is the percent of expenses compared to your income. So it compares how much of your expenses that you can cover based on your income. So in this case, it's 100%. That means all your money that you've earned goes towards all your loans and all your expenses. Now the runway, as we mentioned before, is the number of months that you can cover expenses and loans based on savings only. In this case, it's three months. Most people have less than that, just one or two months. So they're essentially living paycheck to paycheck. And if you face a potential job loss or a reduction in income from your business, you don't really have much time before your savings run out and you can't cover the necessary payments. And you could go into a default. You don't have much time to find a new job or spin up new sources of income either. So looking at the conclusion, your financial health looks vulnerable if you lose your job during a crisis situation. And now would probably be a good time to talk to a licensed financial planner and consider talking to your lender about refinancing to bring down those monthly payments so you can keep making them and avoid a possible default. On to the second example. The total monthly income is the same, but the total monthly payments have gone down and liquid assets have increased. In this example, the runway has doubled to seven months. So what does that mean? It means that if you lose your job or your main source of income, you still have a lot more time to find a new job or to spin up a new source of income. And you can still cover your loan payments and avoid a potential default. A real world example would be to move from a city or a location with a higher cost of living to somewhere else with a lower cost of living whether that's lower rentals or lower commute costs, or you could even do the digital nomad kind of thing. You could move to a different part of the country or even a different country with much lower costs of living compared to where you were before. So by having a large difference between your income and your expenses, you could put that difference into savings and subsequently into investments. The final example is a left field option. You could go minimalist by pursuing van life. Maybe go back to nature and do some homesteading. If you bring down your monthly income, but you also bring down your expenses by a lot and up your savings, you end up with a really, really long runway. And this gives you more options. You could find a new job in a new location. You could start a new business without a fear of a default hanging over your head. The cool thing about the Duty app is that you can compare two different results. Click Compare, choose two different results, and see them laid out side by side. You could enter multiple inputs, like your current situation, and then some new scenarios. You could ask yourself questions like, what happens if I move somewhere else with a lower cost of living? Or if I decrease my mortgage or rental cost by moving into a smaller home or even a tiny home? And what happens if I pursue a new job with potentially higher income? You can use all these comparisons as a basis for future action. And that has been a tutorial video for the Personal Financial Strength Calculator in Duty, the Investor's Toolkit. Please have a look at the description below for links to download Duty on Google Play Store and Apple App Store. And while you're there, please hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thanks!